Hi everybody, welcome to Midweek. I'm so excited you are here tonight. I'm Stefan, I'm the lead pastor of the Congregation Family. So excited you're here with me. Hope your week has been amazing. Um, I promise you tonight you will be inspired, you're gonna be built up, and you're gonna be encouraged to take on your life, to take on your week, and to be a person of God in your world. The title of my message tonight, which I'm very excited about, is Discover the Power of Stewardship. And so the, the uh, scripture is Genesis 128. And so the scripture is this, And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on earth. Point number one tonight, stewardship is defined as the job of supervising or taking care of something, such as an organization or property. God designed you to be a steward. You know, it's interesting, if you read the Bible, there's a, a fantastic uh, writer, who, and he's a bishop, and he's a theologian named N.T. Wright, Nicholas Thomas Wright, and he's British. And, and they asked him one time in an interview, they said, how would you explain the Bible to a 10 year old, what would you say? How would you explain it in a paragraph or less? And he said, it's really simple. And I love this answer so much. He said that if you can read Genesis 1 and understand what's happening, then the rest of the Bible is in response to Genesis 1. And so if, if that's the way to think about the Bible, Genesis 1 must be important. And so fundamentally, Genesis 1 is the story of a good God who out of love creates this amazing creation. And then he puts human beings in the world as his crown achievement, that they might rule the world and they might steward his creation. And he might dwell in his people in the world. That's the vision of what God wants to do in your life as well as what God has created you to do. When God made you, as Genesis 1 clearly, sa clearly says, he made you as a steward, as Peter says in 1 Peter 2, 9, that you are a royal priesthood. You are a part of royal priesthood. What, what does that mean, Stefan? So royal means kingly. And so when you said yes to Jesus and you became a part of the, the, the family of God, you are now a part of a royal family because if Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he is the creator. And so Jesus is the King of Kings. And so when you said yes to your faith and you joined the people of God, you are now a part of the royal family. You are a part of living your life as an agent of purpose for the King in this world. The second part of that is is a priesthood. Well, what is a priest? Well, a priest is someone who works in the temple and takes care of the temple. And so in ancient Rome, there were thousands of temples in every city because there were a polytheistic society. And so everyone knew what a temple was. A temple was the, a place where a certain God lived. And so if you wanted to talk to a certain God about a problem you had in your life, you would go to that temple and you would talk to that God and you would give some form of an offering. Maybe you had issues with fertility. So you went to the fertility God and you gave an offering and you prayed to the God of fertility. Or maybe you needed money and so there was a God for money. Or maybe you were stuck in a situation and you wanted luck and so there was a god for luck in ancient rome there were thousands of gods and the the idea was that every god lived in, in one of these temples and, and so a priest was a person who lived in the temple and, and made sure that what that god wanted in that temple happened and so what's interesting is when you read genesis 1 is that the story of creation is a temple motif god creates the world and then in day seven, he rests in it. It's a temple. The world is the temple of God. He created creation and he put people in the world so he might fill it with his love and justice and mercy and glory. And so when we say that we are stewards, what we are saying is that we are royal priests, that we are a part of the family of God in the world. We are. God's crowning achievement in creation. But we don't work to our own ends. We are priests. 
We govern and guard all of creation. We're stewards, like a gardener who takes care of a garden. What we do is that we make sure that justice happens, that peace happens, that compassion and love and mercy take place because we do not work for our own purpose, but we work for his purpose. We work for the king's purpose. And so point number two, God made you to be a spiritual influencer in your family, in your place of work, and within society at large. You are a leader in the world and a steward of God's creation. You know, for the longest time, I always thought that a leader was someone who was like in front of the crowd, right? I would go to church and there'd be a guy on stage and I would say, that guy's the leader. Or I'd go to a company and there would be a CEO and you would say, that guy's the leader. And so for a long time, I thought leadership just meant being on top. But what I realized over time when I pastored and decided to work and join teams is that leadership has nothing to do with being on the top. Leadership has everything to do with being the person who takes responsibility for the mission they've been given. And so what that means is that you can lead at every level. You don't have to just, leadership is not something that's just given to the top 1%. Leadership is given to every single person because every one of us has responsibilities within whatever chain of command we might be in. I think of like a family and you, have, you could have a family of four. You could have a mother and a father and an older brother and a younger sister. Well, every person in that chain can lead. The young girl can lead. She can do her chores. She can take care of her responsibilities. She can listen to her parents and she can love her older brother, right? The older brother can lead. Even though he's not head of the house, he can lead by example. He can take care of his younger sister, right? And he can support his parents because parents have a lot of responsibility. It's the same. Maybe it's a split household where one, where the mother stays home and the father works. They both work together. Maybe it's a household where both parents work. In that situation, again, you have two people who are 100% in and they have different responsibilities, but they all work together. Four leaders at four different positions. And I love this because what this means is that you are a spiritual influencer. I don't care what rung you are on at work. I don't care how old you are and where you are in position your family. You influence and have a sphere of influence in your life. What you do matters, both to the people below you as well as to the people above you. And so God wants to tell you that you have a responsibility as a spiritual influencer to be a leader, to be a steward of all that God's given you. Point number three, you are called to be a spiritual steward. When you build God's house, he will build your house. So I want to break this up into two pieces. So the first one is that you are called to be a spiritual steward. You know, one of the most amazing things about life is having the privilege to take on responsibility. You know, I was interested, I was talking to someone today, actually, and he's new to our church, and, and he asked me, because uh, he was 27 years of age and I'm 33, and he said, and I started in ministry when I was 27, so he asked me, Stefan, what prompted you to go into ministry? Did you feel called? And I said, well, I did and I didn't. You know, sometimes when you talk to people, when they say called, they mean that did God wake you up in the middle of the night? Did a raven come to your house? Was it like a scene out of Harry Potter where you got like some weird envelope? No, no. I felt called to be in ministry because I felt responsible to step up and step out. I felt like if the church had more young people who cared and wanted to be a part and wanted to use their gifts and talents to help other people, that that would probably be a good thing. And so for me, when I went to God and said, God, I am willing, please use me. I would like to be a part of the solution. Then what God does is he will take you, he will elevate you, he will empower you, and he will equip you. I love this line that God does not call the equipped, he equips the called. He will take you in your position that you have and he will give you as much as you ask for. So if you go to God and say, God, I want to be a spiritual influencer. I want to be one in my family. 
I want to be a leader in my family. I want to be a help to my family. I might be a son, but I want to help my parents. I might be a parent, but I want to help my kids. God will equip you for that. If you're at your job and you say, I want to be a help to my boss, I want to be a help to my coworkers, I want to add value wherever I go. When I come through the door, I want people to see me and think help has come. If that's you, if you say yes to that, God promises that he will equip you. And the reason why is because he made you as a steward. When you said yes to Jesus, you said yes to being a part of a royal priesthood, of a family of God who are leaders in this world. I'm done preaching. I hope this blessed you tonight. And just pray with me for 20 seconds. Father, thank you so much for calling us to be members of your household. Thank you that we are royal priesthood. Thank you for empowering us. Thank you for opening up opportunities. Thank you for calling us to be spiritual influencers. Let your goodness become our goodness in every part of our lives. In Jesus' name. God bless you guys. I'll see you on Sunday. Do not miss it. I promise it will be amazing.